Are you someone who's joining a technical team but does not know the ABC of technology? Or are you someone who's already working in a technical company and keep hearing terms that you can't make the head or tail of? Don't worry guys, this video is a part of a series of videos where I'll help you build your toolkit to understand what those engineers are saying or at least pretend to. Hey guys, my name is Arushi and I have about 6 plus years of experience building tech products. I worked in unicorns across India and Dubai and right now I'm working as a senior product manager at Noon which is the biggest e-commerce player in the MENA region. So a lot of you have reached out to me asking me what resources to read through or what material to read to prepare for your day one as a non-technical person joining a technical team. So this video will help you build your resources and make sure that you're able to engage and understand what the software developers are really talking about. This is video number two. I have linked to the video number one in the description section below. And in spirit of full disclosure, again, here are the 10 terms that we've covered in both the videos together. So term number one, Git or repo. A lot of us might have heard terms like I'm merging this into my repo or I'm taking a pull out of my Git. Well, while these terms sound like something out of this world, these are basically tools that engineers use and that's about it. Git stands for GitHub, which is basically a shared folder where all the live code for a particular product stays. Imagine this, you were a developer for Google and you were working on Gmail. Now it's not just you who'd be working there, right? I'm sure Google has tons of engineers working on the Gmail or even one single feature of Gmail itself. Now if so many people are working on a piece together, we need to build something which allows so many people to contribute to it together. Imagine a Google Sheet. If a Google Sheet was hundreds of pages long and it required 20, 30 different people to contribute to it at the same time, what do you think would happen? Well, the sheet would get frozen, it will not work and on goes the list, right? So since we cannot have everyone working on such a big piece of work together, the right way to do, go about this is that all of us download the live copy of the sheet right now we make our edits and then all of us can just upload our final fix together. So this is what a git really is. It holds the final version of the code and all the developers can then take a download of the code from the git, make their changes and upload it back up. That's it. So that's what git is. A repo or a repository is just a directory in that space. So a git could have multiple repos or repositories of code. Each of the repos could be different for different product types, different um, setups, etc. Now the next two terms are linked to one another, pull request and merge. In the example I just said, a developer would in effect just download the copy of the code which is live right now. This is called a pull request. And once he's done with his code, he will then have to take his code and merge it with whatever is live on the platform. Now this is called merge. Now what do I mean by merging it? See, if you and I, we started working on the code together, you and I would pull from the code together at the same time. At that point, the code said, let's say ABC. Then you made a change to A and made it A dash and you made the change and you uploaded it back up. Now it's A dash BC. But the code that I was working on is still ABC and I changed it to AB dash C. Now when I upload it back up, it is my job to make sure that if there's any change that has happened to ABC in between the time from when I downloaded it to now, I have to merge that change to my change as well. So now when I upload, I'll change A to A dash, which was the change that you did. And I'll also upload my change, which is changing B to B dash. And I'll upload A dash B dash C. I hope that makes you understand this meaning of merge and why the term merge is generally used by engineers. Next one is production or staging. Well, production, what does that mean? So production is basically that code which is currently being run on the platform. So for example, you are working in WhatsApp and there's one code which is right now being used by all its users live. And then there's another setup called staging, which is the setup which is used internally for testing any new release. The next term in this video is SDK. An SDK or a software development kit is a collection of software development tools in one installable package. Simply put, it's an app in itself which can be incorporated inside any other app. Imagine that you wanted to integrate Zoom calling into your own app. Now to integrate with them, you'll have to use some micro app of Zoom within your own. 
This micro app will do the work of using Zoom systems and ensuring that Zoom is definitely integrated with yours. These micro apps are also called SDKs. The last two terms, synchronous or asynchronous systems. So a synchronous system is something which happens together. For example, both of our eyes blink together. Or once I start eating, my digestion started. So my eating and digestion are sort of working in sync with each other. Whereas asynchronous systems do not depend on one another. For example, my eating and my breathing are really not linked to each other. These are asynchronous events. Similarly, when you're building a product, there could be certain features which are synchronous. For example, when I click on send email, it actually sends an email. It actually triggers a service for sending an email, which is probably synchronous. But when I schedule an email to be sent at 8 o'clock next morning, then the scheduling happens right now, but the actual sending happens at 8 o'clock in the morning. So those are asynchronous events. Oh, that was a tough one. I hope I was able to explain it very clearly to all of you. So that's it for this video, guys. I know these two videos have been quite tough and challenging. Do let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or if you've not understood anything that well. I'll be happy to engage with you again and help you through it. Thank you for watching so far. If you like the content, please share it with your friends and like the channel and subscribe to it. And I'll see you next time. Ta-da!